everybody, Ryan here, or MNR Productions, and today we are going to go over everything for LEGO Star Wars Summer 2020. This includes basically full res HD pictures of every set, except a few that we're going to talk about at the very end during our rumor roundup. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button, I would very much appreciate it. Oh, I should also say up front here, because people keep asking me, as far as I know, and from what they've told me... The LEGO Star Wars set should still be releasing on August 1st everywhere, except for the ones that don't release August 1st that we know about, like the Advent Calendar and Razor Crest. So we're going to go in set number order. Let's get started with the Advent Calendar here, which is going to be a $40 set with set number 75279. We've got 311 pieces. There are six minifigs in this year's Advent Calendar. We've got a Darth Vader, a Stormtrooper, a Rey, a Luke, a Poe wearing his Christmas sweater. We have a Sith Trooper and then a Battle Droid, which is not a minifigure we also have a little porg in there dio as well so quite a nice range of characters and also some notable builds in my opinion the pit droid the gonk droid which is in some wild christmasy wintery style beam it up the tauntaun the hoth shield generator droid control ship the razor crest making an appearance and perhaps the biggest and most important thing to note here is that the a-wing the micro scale a-wing in this set is leaps and bounds better than the one that we got in the May the 4th promotion, which is blowing my mind here. Makes the May 4th promo look even worse than I already thought it was. The next set coming out on August 1st is set number 75280, 501st Legion Clone Troopers, or the 501st Battle Pack. It's a $30 set, including 285 pieces. We've got the four minifigs being a 501st Jet Trooper and three 501st Clone Troopers, as well as two battle droids included in the set to kind of counteract them. You're getting the Bark Speeder and the ATRT. The Bark Speeder, I don't really have any issues with. The ATRT, I think, looks generally good. A lot of people complain about LEGO ATRTs because they are oversized in scale with what they would be technically with minifigs, but that's not something I personally care about for the most part. What I do care about is the weapon they put on the front of this ATRT is a lone stud shooter. I don't know why they didn't reprise the design from the previous version from last year for the uh, weapon on the front there. They just went with this dorky looking stud shooter, and I'm going to have to mod that out or something because I do not like the way that looks at all. And it's weird because I just said I don't care about uh, whether or not the minifig scale is a thing, but I think as far as having the accuracy of as far as the blaster on the front, kind of important to me personally. And you know, things are going to vary from person to person, so you may think differently. That's fine. Next up is set number 75281. And get ready, here comes the rant. It's the Anakin's Jedi Interceptor. It's a $30 set with 248 pieces. That's information we kind of already knew. The box art is pretty clean looking. The design of the thing is upgraded from what we've seen with previous models. And it's nice for people that either don't already have one or want an upgrade to previous models. That's great. I think the Anakin Starfighter is fine in that way. Now where this set starts to fall apart is in the written description of this set that LEGO has provided that they'll put on their website and everything, LEGO acknowledges that this iconic vehicle is featured in Star Wars Revenge of the Sith and Star Wars The Clone Wars. However, later in the description, they say a very definitive statement. This LEGO Star Wars The Clone Wars set is purely made of Lego building bricks. I don't know what else it would be made of. But the more important thing is the beginning. <laughs> this Lego Star Wars The Clone Wars set. And so if we look at the images, we get our R2-D2 minifigure, fine and dandy. Another R2-D2. I think R2-D2 has been in at least one set every year of Lego Star Wars. It's an interesting fact if you guys didn't know that. But then we look at our Anakin. You may recognize our Anakin Skywalker minifigure. Maybe not his face. They did change up his face. Take a gander at that torso print. I don't remember Anakin being all battered up from Mustafar in the middle of the Clone Wars. We're doing this again. Oh yes, Lego, you gotta change this. You cannot put the Mustafar Anakin minifigure in this set. Lazy, disgusting, whatever word you want to use to describe it, they all fit. They all apply. Because this is unacceptable. Lego is a premium product. Only the best is good enough. I'm not going to ramble on here. I'm just going to leave it at that. Lego needs to change this. This is not a good thing to see happening. They're reusing a torso that has no business being in this set, especially because in the description they say it's a Clone Wars set, which is even farther removed than the Obi-Wan rant, which we're still going to talk about later in this video again. And even if it's not a self-proclaimed Clone Wars set, this Starfighter is destroyed at the beginning of Episode 3, therefore that Anakin torso can only be from the beginning of Episode 3, not the last 30 minutes of Episode 3. Set number 75283 is the Armored Assault Tank, AAT. It's a $40 set for the United States with 286 pieces. You're going to be getting two minifigs and two battle droids here with Ahsoka Tano and Ahsoka's Clone Trooper, which is the 332nd Legion Clone Trooper. I don't know why they didn't just call it the 332nd Legion Clone Trooper, because they're willing to call the 501st Clone Troopers 501st Clone 
Clone Troopers, just why not have that continuity? And then another weird thing that they've done here is they have the two battle droids on the box, and one says AAT driver battle droid, the other one just says battle droid, but they're clearly the exact same battle droid, so why do they have different titles? Doesn't make sense to me. So that being said, I'm gonna nitpick on this AAT for a minute here. Uh, I talked about this in another video, but basically it's missing the blue stripe that would run up the center of the set, and I think that really detracts from the look of this set. And another huge thing that I've seen being pointed out to me is that the cannon on top is way too big. It is way too big compared to the rest of the set, and it reaches way too far out in front of like the front hood of the AAT. It should only reach out to about out there like if you're looking at the realistic sizing proportions of it it goes like twice the length of the actual AAT so it looks a little ridiculous in that perspective if you're looking for something that's accurate if you don't care about that again that's fine and this is a good set for you but that's something that now that it's kind of been pointed out to me I'm going to be hard pressed to forget and I could see myself actually modding the set to shorten that barrel length a little bit. It does have a neat feature where you can actually fit one of the battle droid pilots into the front end of the AAT. I was worried that they wouldn't have anything like that on this one and it looks like they do have that feature built in. And then you have the other AAT driver battle droid being able to sit up in the top gunner position. Decent looking model however has some inaccuracies and flaws that I think will be tough to overlook for some people. Next up is one of my favorite Favorite summer sets this year. It's set number 75284, Knights of Ren Transport Ship. The $70 set includes 595 pieces, and it's a pretty damn good looking one, if I may say so myself. I really love what we're seeing here with Ray and two Knights of Ren. I wish they had put their real names on there. It's kind of a shame they didn't. I know I've gotten some comments telling me the real names, but I have not committed them to memory. According to the description, the set has like skis underneath, so it should be able to kind of hover above uh, where you're putting it, or at least look like it's hovering when you put it down. You also may uh, think that it's landing gear, kind of one in the same there, I guess, for something like this. The interior spacing seems to be quite limited compared to what I thought it might have been. It looks like you're just gonna have that one small bit of interior space in the midsection, and then a couple other sections where you can kind of pop in your Knights of Ren to sit down, but other than that, very limited interior space. This seems like, uh, as far as like a playability set, it's going to be more of like a swoosh it around and have them fight each other. Kind of surprised though, that they're not retaining the Episode 9 box art for this set. The box art looks fine though, I, I don't really care what the border is, but I find it weird that they kind of go out of their way to make these different um, characters and borders and then kind of arbitrarily seem to pick where they use them, although I guess the two Clone Wars ones were just because they're from the most recent Clone Wars arc, kind of. Let's do some non-nitpicking, though, because this is a glaring problem with this next set. Set number 75286, General Grievous' Starfighter, $80. 487 pieces, $80. Just so you know what you're getting here, you're getting three minifigs in the set with General Grievous, who I think looks fine, white or tan. I saw some complaints people wanted him to be in tan. I think he looks fine in white, and I don't think that it's particularly accurate or inaccurate one way or the other. You'll also see a airborne clone troop which I think is a decent minifigure. I think a lot of people were hoping for Cody in this set, and it's unfortunate that it didn't happen, but I think this figure is a fine addition for this set, and especially for people that maybe didn't get that original 212th Utapal Troopers Battle Pack. This is going to be a great way to at least get one. I know it doesn't compare to getting a battle pack and being able to build an army, but if you just wanted one, this is a great way to pick up one. And then the third minifigure is going to be that Obi-Wan Kenobi minifigure, which I ranted on quite a bit the other day, and again, this is going to fall into the same category as Anakin, who's being reused from the dual on Mustafar set, so he's still got all these markings on his torso and everything, and this is a set that is from way earlier in the movie, and like I said, I've done the research, pulled up the screenshots and everything. Some people said, oh, well, even after he fights Grievous, maybe he has the marks. There's a picture of him on the Tantiv still before he fights Anakin, and after he's done this whole Grievous thing and flown away in his ship, where he's flawless still on the torso. So that is not an argument. This Obi-Wan should be a clean looking torso. It should have no markings on it whatsoever. Maybe some wrinkles of the clothing, but definitely no like holes in it because it definitely doesn't have holes in it. So I'm begging Lego to change this figure as well. I mean, this is terrible for $80 and you're going to give us this inaccurate garbage. Like I'm not saying that the figure's bad, right? Like most general consumers won't make this distinction, but 
I think that Lego shouldn't look at it that way and cheap out because most people won't notice because me and everyone watching this video has now noticed and Lego is now on notice that, that they need to change this. This set isn't going to sell well anyway at $80, I think. I think it's overpriced. I just, it's, it's a tough sell at 80 bucks. It really is. Looking at the set itself, it's a nice, well-rounded, tiled off build. I really like the way it looks. I'm excited to get it and do a comparison video with the older models. But like I said, for $80, this one feels super expensive for no reason other than maybe that it has General Grievous and for some reason they think that they can charge a General Grievous surcharge. This set should have cost $60 and I don't know where that extra $20 is coming in. Ultimately, people who don't have a General Grievous Starfighter and want one though will probably buy this and it won't be a bad set for you, I'll tell you that. Like it, I'm, most Lego sets nowadays are good sets and that is just a fact, right? They make good builds. I, I think that's hard to get around. But sometimes you can do things like this with the Torso Print of Obi-Wan and then charge $80 for the set and then you start to lose people, and this is one that they have definitely lost me on. I will say I actually do really like the fact that you can kind of hide the lightsabers away inside the side panels of Grievous's Starfighter, as opposed to before they used to kind of be tucked up underneath the Starfighter and then they were kind of visible. It kind of makes it more accurate in a way where you don't see them underneath the ship, so quite like that, but that's General Grievous's Starfighter and my mini rant to kind of add on to that. Next up is the 75288AT80, $160 with 1,267 pieces. A little bit pricey, probably for some people got Luke Skywalker, General Veers, two AT-AT -AT drivers, and two snowtroopers. This one is a monstrous AT-AT. -AT. It's probably their most accurate AT-AT -AT to date. I really like what they did in a lot of places, like with the blue chairs in the midsection of the AT-AT. -AT. You can fit more minifigures in the pilot section, as well as the speeder bike that fits into the back end of the AT-AT. -AT. So definitely some nice features to this set, and this is one that I'm personally thinking of getting three of. I just love the AT-AT. -AT. I think that's true of a lot of people. And perhaps the killer feature that this set has that no other AT-AT -AT has ever had is the winch to pull Luke up and his thermal detonator piece that he's going to have to throw into the AT-AT -AT and blow the whole thing up like he does in episode five. So this set is really, really good in my opinion. I think that this one's going to be a really popular one. Set number 75291 is going to be the Lego Star Wars Death Star Final Duel, and this one is confirmed to be $100 now with 775 pieces. And there's a couple of things I want to say with this set. First off, you'll notice that the box is now more vertically oriented than the previous versions from 2015 and that is something that kind of caught me off guard i was expecting it to be a more elongated box and i don't know that was just one of those things very nitpicky doesn't really matter to the end product but something i noticed right away i was like oh that's not what i expected they have upgraded the set in quite a few ways from the 2015 version though they've added some paneling onto the side of the palpatine's throne area and what that does is twofold first it makes it more accurate to the scene where he has like things beside him right and two it makes it a lot easier to push those side things into place next to him both the shaft and the little walkway those sections um, would on the previous model just kind of free float and now they can kind of push up perfectly against those two side sections next to Palpatine and that way they're both at the same exact angle the older set that was kind of a problem so I'm glad that they were able to fix that I'm sure there's some other structural fixes and changes within the models build that I may notice while building it they've also bulked up the door area which I guess is nice as well and of course the minifigs are being updated from their predecessors the previous a set costs eighty dollars, like I said, and with inflation, that's about eighty-seven dollars and fifty cents in two thousand and twenty money. So for essentially thirteen dollars more, you're getting about fifty more pieces, some updated minifigures, and you're able to purchase a set that you otherwise would have had to pay maybe one hundred twenty, hundred thirty dollars, maybe more on eBay for. And in that perspective, I think that this is a pretty fairly priced set, and it's one that I cannot wait to get my hands on to do a comparison of. This is an added in recording here at the end of this segment because as I was editing this video. I happened to look at an image that showed a specific angle of the Vader and for some reason I didn't notice it before. Vader has arm printing. This changes everything. That is really, really good looking and it is exceptionally accurate to what we see in the movies. So that is sweet looking. Didn't realize it at first glance, but yes, this Vader has some pretty great looking arm printing. Set number 75292 of course is going to be the Razor Crest. We've seen plenty of that. That one's been around since Toy Fair of this year. It's going to be a pretty epic set. I think a lot of people are really excited for it. Of course releasing September 1st unlike most of these other sets on August 1st. With 1,023 pieces it costs 130 bucks in the US. The minifigs it includes are the Mandalorian, Grief Karga, and a Scout Trooper. You're also getting the Child in IG-11. So decent character selection. We've said Queel would have been nice 
nice, but unfortunately just not seen in this set. I think this one's gonna sell really well, despite the fact that a lot of people have brought up to me that they would have rather seen the Mandalorian in his Beskar armor, and I agree with that. I wish LEGO had updated his armor for this set, because with the inclusion of the Scout Trooper, it very much implies that this is based off the later episodes in Season 1, so would have been nice maybe in future years. Kind of unfortunate again for $130 product, but I don't see this one as being as bad and egregious as the Anakin and Obi-Wan character reuses, although you could make the argument that it is for you personally. It just, to me, doesn't irk me the same way that those do, especially given that those are vehicles and content that's been out for 15 years. The Mandalorian is newer. They were developing this product probably while the show was being made or as it was coming out type of thing. So you can give them some leeway there with products that are being based off things that are 15 years old. There is no excuse for using the wrong figure in my opinion. So that's where I land on that. Next up is the 75293 Resistance ITS Transport. It costs $100 in the United States with 930 two pieces. You have Lieutenant Beck and Vi Moradi, plus an astromech droid and gonk power droid as your characters in the set. It is a pretty decent looking resistance transport set in my opinion. I really like the blue and gray color scheme, kind of matches Poe's X-Wing from a couple years back. It does have a little stamp on the set that says transported from Star Wars Galaxy's Edge trading post, which implies this will not be a Galaxy's Edge exclusive as some may have feared. It wouldn't have bothered me too much because Galaxy's Edge it's just a hop, skip, and a jump away from me about an hour away in Orlando, but I could see it being a huge problem for people that do not have that luxury. So yeah, this set will be available everywhere. Don't worry about that. I did notice something here while editing that I didn't notice before, and that's that there are some stud shooters on the back end of the ship. That's the first time I've seen some stud shooters used basically where engines usually go, so that's kind of interesting. And something else I kind of didn't mention in my first recording of this is that it is disappointing to only get two minifigures in a $100 set, but seeing as it's a gal Galaxy's Edge set, it is kind of in a league of its own. If this was like an AT-AT with too many figs, I think I would be way more disappointed. Looks like it's going to be pretty much worth that $100 price tag in my opinion, and it is based off a ride from Galaxy's Edge, by the way, if you didn't catch that in uh, a previous video I had made, but it does look like a pretty large set, very nice build, kind of Tantive inspired, kind of Rebel Combat friggin' inspired, kind of like a mix of those sets to me. So this will be a nice $100 set for a lot of people that want something from Galaxy's Edge, but may not be able to go, or maybe people that do go to Galaxy's Edge and want something that they did see there and experience themselves. The next set coming out on August 1st as well is going to be the 75317, the Mandalorian and the Child Brickheads. It's going to be a $20 Brickhead set. Again, this is another one that we've seen since February, so nothing surprising here, but that one is coming out, and I had to get it in this video because this is a comprehensive video of everything coming out for uh, summer 2020 and basically the rest of the year. Also, there are a couple of LEGO Star Wars brick sketches that are supposed to be released on July 15th at $20 a piece. Kind of pricey in my opinion for what it looks like they are. Interesting concept, definitely something artistic and would be nice for display on a desk or something, you know, small build like that. But I think some people would rather spend the 20 bucks on like the Mandalorian and the Child Brickheads. Anyway, it is time for the rumor roundup. The things that we don't know everything about for the rest of 2020. So these sets could release at any point between now and the rest of the year. Like these aren't guaranteed August 1st, September 1st, October 1st, whatever the deal may be. But we have set number 31 200 Sith Mosaic, and this is going to be part of LEGO's new adult style mosaic line. You can expect it to probably be in that black box art and whatnot. And it had been rumored to be Darth Maul, but seems to be more heavily rumored to be Darth Vader. Time will tell exactly what it will be, but it should be a somewhat pricey mosaic set with a couple thousand, maybe three thousand pieces. And obviously, they're going to be very small pieces, so don't get your hopes up. There's just giant, giant thing. The next set, more recent rumor coming out of the rumor mill, is set number 75290, the UCS Imperial Shuttle. And this would be a remake of my favorite favorite set of all time, the 2010 UCS Imperial Shuttle, and I'm very interested to see what this uh, ends up being like if it is the case. It would probably be $300 or more with around 3,000 pieces. That's what I would imagine it to be. There are some improvements they could make over the previous model, and we should know more within the coming months. There's another set in 2020 that I hadn't told you about yet. It's set number 75294. It's a $40 set, and I know nothing else about it. I just know that it exists, and that's all I can tell you right now, so we'll see what comes of that, but that is coming out this year. It's a $40 set. Again, set number 75294, so 
take what you want from that. Set number 75318 is, of course, going to be the child, and that's going to be the buildable character version of him. So that one is also confirmed to be $100 now, not quite the $70 that I had been speculating. So a little bit pricier than what maybe we had been thinking, but I think that definitely opens the door for this to be an absolutely incredible build, given that the UCS style Yoda build was $100 with 1,771 pieces. Excellent deal. Great large build. And if this one's $100 as well, I think they can make it an excellent baby Yoda for somewhere in the same piece count. So that is very exciting to me. And our final set of 2020, at least that we know of, there could be, who knows, there could be something else, but I don't think there is. I think this may be it, it finally for 2020. The Bespin Luke versus Vader Star Wars Celebration exclusive. And of course, it was just announced that Star Wars Celebration and Anaheim this year will be canceled. However, Lego is still apparently going to produce, or maybe they've already produced, and give out or sell or do something with the sets that they have made, right? And so I have a suggestion for them, and hopefully they take me up on this suggestion because I think it is an excellent one. Make this available to every LEGO Star Wars Black VIP card member. Not free, just available. They can purchase it with their VIP points through the LEGO Shop at Home site. Give them like a week exclusivity to it, and then after that week, give out the rest that you have to regular VIP members available with their VIP points and limit one per person as well to all parties involved. That is my suggestion for that. I would assume it would be like a 200, 300 piece set and that it would cost like 40 or 45 bucks if it were available at Celebration because that's typically like what those builds kind of are. So that is uh, pretty much everything for LEGO Star Wars Summer 2020 and uh, even a little bit beyond there for the rest of 2020 moving into the fall. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. There was a ton of sets covered in this video. Anakin and Obi-Wan need to be changed in their respective sets. I have no doubt about that. That absolutely needs to happen. There are definitely some great sets coming out this summer, in my opinion, with the 501st Battle Pack out there. The Knights of Ren transport ship, I think, is really good. The Razor Crest, of course, the AT-AT. Some people going to like that AAT, others not if you're uh, a nut for the accuracy. So I also think this year's Avent Calendar is one of the best. So that's a, a positive as well. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. If you guys did enjoy this video, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the latest LEGO Star Wars news as well as other fun uh, LEGO videos and things I do on the channel. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.